Welcome to If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo podcast with Don Purdy, former member of the Buffalo Bills front office, 27 years, and Josh Cormier, a member of the coaching staff under the Wade Phillips regime. And we are here, as always, to talk with you about the Buffalo Bills of 1990 and, of course, 2022. Okay, go ahead, Doc. All right. Um, We are joined by Christine Lisi. Uh, from ESPN Radio, her voice for 22 years now is well known by all sports fans at the ESPN Radio Network as an anchor. Uh, she's also president, voiceover talent at Christine Lisi Communications LLC, who happens to be a Geneseo grad and still a big supporter of the Bills. And we are really privileged to talk to our first person ever from Bristol. Yeah, cool. welcome, Christine. Uh, did you just get off of uh, ESPN Radio? Did you just do a segment? I did. I just did an update. Yep. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, you know, I I saw that you had liked a couple of our our things on Twitter, and and I was real excited when I reached out to you and and you agreed to do this. And I have to say, personally, it was kind of exciting being able to email someone at ESPN.com, you know, to get uh, permission for you to come on. So so thank you for that. That was that was kind of exciting. Can you kind of take us back? Um, you know, to your days at Geneseo, even before that, you know, growing up here in Western New York and how your love for the Bills started? Sure. I, um, I remember going to my first Bills game when I was seven. Um, it was against the Jets <laughs> and uh, the Bills won that game, which like that, you know, that hooked me right there. And um, as a family, like growing up, we went to a lot of uh, Bills games and a lot of Sabres games, too. And even the Buffalo Stallions. I don't know how old you guys are. Yeah, if you remember the I soccer sure team. Do. I sure do. I'm in my, I, I just turned 47 last weekend. So I, I remember the Stallions. OK. Yeah. And um, it just it, it continued for me. I remember in um, gosh, it, I think I was in fifth or sixth grade and the and the Bills like you know, made the playoffs in back-to-back years. I think ended up losing to the Chargers one year, lost to the Bengals one year, um, and then, like, some sad years, which is how we got, like, you know, Jim Kelly, uh, Bruce Smith, Andre Reed, and then the the nice run that, like, kind of coincided when I got to Geneseo with the Jim Kelly years and the and the four straight Super Bowls and, like, what a, what a run that was. And, you know, we hit a, a – after Jim retired, we hit a long <laughs> – a long, tough drought – until we got our, our our savior, as they like to call him, Josh Allen. And um, the last uh, three seasons, like, as far, you know, starting in 2020, it has been like, as you guys know, like quite a run. It has been so exciting and so much fun, which, and it, it coincided with us, my husband and I getting the Sunday ticket for free, <laughs> which is wild. <laughs> so we got like, you know, I've, I've been able to watch this, this amazing, this, this amazing group of guys. So it's, it's been a, a, a lot of fun. Well, it, it's kind of the premise of our show. Like it feels now the way it did in, in the early nineties. Yes. You know, we're talking about 1990 specifically. We, we go beyond that, but it's great. Like for my own daughters <laughs> and mm-hmm. other, others to kind of, you, you tell them what it was like, but until they experience it for themselves, themselves, uh, you know, this is this is it. it it's it's uh, it makes it so much fun. Um, yes. So so then your career at the same time, um, I, I presume you're you're getting into journalism that you know manifests itself in, in having this incredible position. Like, how did that? Uh, what was the progression of that in your your broadcasting career? Uh, I actually, it was kind of neat at, at Geneseo. They, um, they let you do, um, you try out for, like I, I did the radio station and TV station all four years. I did news and sports and that was like a, that was neat. Um, I worked at a station in Olean, uh, in the, my summer, my summer and winter breaks at WMNS and they, they sent me to like Bill's training camp <laughs> You know, I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but they let me, they let me go do all this cool stuff. And then you learn, um, you know, how to, how to anchor and report and produce and, and do all these neat things. And then, um, I worked at another station in only in like right after college, WHDL. Um, I think the, their FM station is maybe, a they carry the bills. They're part of the bills radio network. And I just, I, I, I got to ESPN in 95 as a production assistant, I worked behind the scenes for four years. I did a lot of um, NHL Tonight stuff, which I loved. Um, and then I, I left briefly. I worked in Hartford a little bit in radio, and then they you know, brought me back part-time 
in uh, at ESPN Radio, and I just kind of worked my way up, and I've been here ever since. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. I'm very the, lucky. The late '90s, uh, working with the NHL, that's when the Sabers were good. And, yes, and, the Kashik <laughs> and no goal and all that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. That that was like the glory years for the Sabers over the last 25. There hasn't been there haven't been too many of those either. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Did you have an inspiration, someone in in broadcasting that you loved? Listening to, uh, we we did read in, in in doing our research about you that uh, you worked with Dick Schaap. I had a privilege to work with him, but like before that, before you really got into it, were, were there those that you just really love to listen to? I uh, this is funny. This is I'm going real old school. I remember Rick Azar was like the first sports anchor. Mm -hmm. that I remember in my life. And he just seemed awesome. It was, uh, you know, him, Tom Joles and Irv Weinstein. Yep. And like the three of them were like these icons of broadcasting in Buffalo. And I remember watching them and watching Rick. And um, I just thought, you know, that was so neat. And I, I just, I love the Bills and I love the Sabres. And I just, that kind of like started it for me. And I just, I wanted to do news or sports. And then e eventually, like I just decided that sports, because news can be so heavy. As you guys know now, um, mm -hmm. just I just decided that sports was the way I wanted to go. So I, I'm going to point to Rick Azar. Did you ever think about coming back to Buffalo? Like you know, after your time at ESPN, did you ever not have an opportunity to come back here and and, and you know, do sports here? I, you know what, I did not. I I didn't try, but um, I I think it the because I I enjoy what I do so much here, and I I built a life here, and my husband's from here, so. Um, I didn't, I didn't know if there would be any opportunities for me there as well. I used to joke. I'm like, the only thing that would, uh, pry me out of here was if the Sabres, um, I could get their side ice job, but that guy's a, a legend they got there. So I don't think I'm yeah. bumping Rob Ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob, 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 you, you don't want to fight, you don't want to fight Rob Ray for that. I don't, Rob I Ray. think he could take me. I'm pretty sure yeah. we're about the same age. I think he could take me, but, but all seriousness, I, I do, I enjoy what I do so much. I still have a big passion for Western New York and, and and sports there and everything and, and my family and friends that still live here still live there. Yeah. So so where you are, we've alluded to this already, but the ESPN offices are just iconic in, in, in the sports world. I, I read where uh, even though you've been there a while, you saw Jerry Rice walk by and you're like, oh my gosh, it's Jerry Rice. I mean, yeah. Um, the commercials were were just excellent. Um, I, working at the Bills office myself for 27 years, uh, you know, people had this perception. All they knew was really what happened on game day. And I remember one time I was in the bathroom, uh, the men's room in, in the offices and, you know, washing my hands at the sink and in the mirror in the stall underneath, you could see these giant blue fuzzy feet. And and uh, it was obviously the guy dressing, <laughs> dressing up for Billy Buffalo for an event. It was a guy next to me. And I said to him, I think this is what people outside of here think happens here every day. <laughs> but we kind of think at ESPN offices, those things happen all the time just because yes. of commercials. But what are, what are some of the great uh, memories you have? Well, and memories and, and things that are still happening there. Uh, the Jerry Rice thing was pretty cool because he was just like very unassuming and he needed directions <laughs> somewhere. So he, I'll, I just hear, excuse me. And like, I turn around and it's him and I just kind of, <gasps> You know, I didn't know what to do and I didn't, I, I really couldn't help him because I didn't, he's like, I'm looking for Cam and I'm like, do you have a last name? But it was funny. We, we eventually uh, found out where he was supposed to go. So we helped him. Um, just some of the neat things that like I've been here for. Um, some of the no hitters are really neat. Like Tim Lincecum had one when I was here and like just kind of moments like that are fun. Um, I, I, I'm not here for many Bills games, but I was here. A couple weeks ago for the Thanksgiving Day game, so uh, trying to to stay calm <laughs> in yeah. that in that time frame for myself. And this is what a funny, uh, crazy fan I am. I guess I when I got out of my car that day, I had already looked up what channel it would be on Sirius. Oh, nice. Because I only worked till two thirty, so like as soon as like my last update, like my car was ready. Like I started it, the radio came on, so I had on Murph and Eric Wood <laughs> there you go. in my car. In my car, so I ran. I'm a, I must look like a crazy person. I ran across the parking lot, ran into my car, so I could listen to them the rest of the way home, and then obviously watch the rest of the game with my husband. And uh, so you know, I did that. I I just think like. Uh, being here for certain events, you know, big events, like whether it's the Olympics or, you know, just watching, watching my teams play. That's been, you know, that's been some of them. And, you know, meeting people like 
Jim Kelly was here one day. Bruce Smith was here one day. I was not here the day Thurman, uh, Thurman Thomas was here, but just like kind of cool things like that. You see people walk through, um, you know, uh, they didn't tell people the day Wayne Gretzky was here because <laughs> they probably didn't want people like me stalking him, but you know, what, for the commercials and stuff, but you know, moments like that are, are pretty cool when they bring in guests, you know, from, uh, you know, basketball or football, baseball, hockey, those are, those are kind of neat moments too. When Jim and Bruce were there, did you have an opportunity to say, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm from Buffalo. I have an opportunity to connect with them real quick. I did. I got a picture with both of them. So that was, that was, you know, pretty cool that day. Fantastic. Uh, is there any other Bills fans there? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining most of the people are probably Patriots fans, but and that must have been miserable for the last 20 years. <laughs> last 20 years, not easy. Um, I think uh, Phil Sapaglia, who's from South Buffalo, he does a lot of our production work. He and I, we actually, he comes in, uh, he gets here a little earlier than I, but every after every game day, he comes in, we break down the weekend, okay. we talk about stuff, what's coming up. Um I think most people here are, they tend to be Patriots fans. There's a lot of Giants fans. There's a lot of Jets fans. Um, I think that's basically, you know, and then we get re like, there's a weird, uh, not weird. I shouldn't say that. There's a, there's a, a substantial number of Eagles fans. Cause we've got a lot of guys in my department from Philadelphia. Um, but there's, you know, there's a few Bills fans, not many, you know, not many on campus, but there's a few of us. Right. So probably one of the most famous, you know, national Bills fans is Chris Berman. Have mm -hmm. you, do you, have you, you know, been able to talk to him about the Bills? Like, like I, I imagine when he's there, he has like a Bills sweatshirt on or, you know, <laughs> like, he's such a, a, a booster for Buffalo over the years. Have you, have you had any fun interactions with him when it comes to the Bills? I have, um, I haven't seen him in a long time, uh, but like, I remember like when I did see him regularly, I remember the first time I went up to him and I just said, you know, I'm Christine Lisi. I have to meet you. Uh, I'm a big Bills fan. And he goes, they kind of like me up there, huh? And I said, yes, we do. And, uh, and then another time I remember, gosh, this was, I think this was around 2001. He, uh, he said, he saw me in the hallway. He's like, I got something for you. So um, I stopped by his office one day and he had like a Marv Levy bobblehead. The Bills had sent him a couple. And so he gave that to me. And um, I, like I said, I haven't seen him in a long time, but I always enjoyed, you know, watching him on prime time with, uh, with Tommy and Robin. Like that was a, you know, that was like one of the highlights. Cause you could watch the Bills you know, those Bills highlights from those great teams, those great Jim Kelly teams. And, uh, but yeah, he's, a, he was a good guy. Always kind to me. He always knew, always knows everybody's name and interacts with people. So a good guy. Yeah. There were, there were a few people that have come, you know, I, I my years with the Bills started during uh, Jim Kelly, Bruce Smith, I interned in 88. And, mm -hmm. uh, but you get to know those guys pretty quickly and you still admire them, but some of the, uh, I don't know the, the way that you look at them in, in awe, it's, you still do. You, but there were two, two people that came in the office. I remember they seemed bigger than life. And one was Chris Berman. Mm -hmm. He was just holding court. He'd meet someone and he'd have a nickname for him right away. The, yes. other, was, the other was O.J. Simpson. And I got to oh. say, the first time I, I met O.J., I, I, he was downstairs working for NBC. And, uh, you know, all Jim Kelly and, and Bruce and Thurman, they were all getting their pictures with him. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's OJ. And of course, we all know yes. what happened shortly after that. But uh, yes. it, I can't say he wasn't a larger than life figure dur during that time. Right, right, right. Who, um, so, so Christine, we, we saw on there that you, you know, worked with Dick Shap and, and you seem to, you know, admire him. And it's kind of funny because our little small podcast here, we joined uh, the Cover One Network, which is a bunch of guys that are doing a lot of film breakdown and, uh, you know, real relevant to the 2022 bills. And, and we're kind of the old guys, you know, telling stories about the 90s. And and I always remember seeing Dick Schapp, you know, growing up and, and enjoying kind of like those long form stories. And in and, and preparing for the interview with you, I kind of realized like we're the Dick Schapp of cover one. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Of course. I Not, not in any way <laughs> comparing myself to Dick Schapp. But can you kind of just talk about him and, and you know, how amazing he was and even his you know, son, Jeremy, like I, they're, they're legends to, you know, anybody who, who you know, follow sports, but, but Dick Shap seemed kind of like larger than life. Yeah. They were one of the first shows that I anchored for um, the sporting life, which was on Saturday mornings. It was Dick and, and Jeremy and like, they were, they always were so kind to me. Like I, I still remember, um, I don't know how long I had been anchoring for him, but I went in to talk to my producer and like, I didn't know, but like, you can hear everything. Like you walk in, the host can hear you, you know, 
because uh, I you just there's a lot of contact with the control room and, and the and the guests or I'm sorry the hosts and uh he said who is that and my producer said that's Christine and he said uh he said um, hello, my dear. It's nice to meet you. You have a, a lovely voice. It's much nicer than mine, which was funny because <laughs> I always thought he had a very soothing, you know, made you feel good voice. And uh, but that was like my one of my few interactions with him. And like Jeremy, I've known for a while. Jeremy and I are like the same age and uh, he's super too. And like, I really enjoy the outside the line stuff that he does and kind of the in-depth um, stories that they do. So uh, two really super nice guys. I I love Dick. He was he was he was a wonderful wonderful man. That's great. I, and our maybe our best comparison, Josh, is we both have spent some time getting to know Van Miller. Yeah. When he was here, I'm sure. Obviously, you heard a ton of Van Miller, but uh, there was a preseason game, and uh, we were playing in Germany actually in '93. And normally he would have had a spotter there, but he didn't have a spotter. And I I knew Van a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, hey, could you come spot for him? I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> and he said, really, all you do is stand over my shoulder with a pencil. I have a roster in front of me. And you point mm -hmm. the guy that made the catch or the tackle or whatever. So I said, okay, well, first of all, the press box was at, like, the top of the stadium. Oh. Second of all, there's 90 guys playing. And I it was the first preseason game. I didn't know a lot of them. Right. Like, is that 86 or 88? I point here, I made so many mistakes. But he just – so professionally smoothed yep. them over and didn't make me feel bad about it. He said, oh, yep. I'll do it again sometime. But those guys, that, uh, when you get a chance to meet them, um, you know, it's, it's, it's it, when, when they're so nice to you, it means so much more even than how, how good they are, what they do sometimes. Van is, Van was amazing. Um, uh, like he and RJ, Rick Jenneret, like just legendary, never, never another, not, not, you know, I'm not slighting anybody who's, you know, taken over for them, but like just what they represented to so many of us, it's just, um, it, it's kind of hard to describe if you didn't live in Western New York, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think like um, Mike Lang in Pittsburgh for the Penguins, like very similar, like kind of, you feel like they're part of your family. Yeah. Rick Jenneret. I mean, I can remember as a kid, you know, driving home uh, in a car, you know, and, and his voice was like, you know, almost like the soundtrack of your childhood. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I, I teared up last year when he finally retired. Me too. Uh, you know, I remember I hadn't watched many Sabres games in the last few years because they've been, you know, so, so bad, but that was, you know, that was appointment TV that night. And I made my, my twin boys that are 10, I, I made them watch it with me because I'm like, this guy is a legend. And yep. I mean, he, geez, I don't know how many times I've listened to him call a Sabres game and you, you, you wanted to win. You wanted the Sabres to win the cup before he retired. Yeah. Right. Like I, I it's one of the big regrets I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, a, a couple more things here. Uh, you know, do you, do you write the updates? Like, like, do you, are, do you have any creative say in like what you say on air or do other people write them for you? I guess we're just kind of curious as to like how that process goes. Yeah. And, and before you answer, we, you mentioned Saturday mornings before it's funny on WBEN, not the sports station or the news station, but they do a, their own sports updates on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. it's just funny because they, they, they use like alliteration all the time. Like we'll say, and the Suns burned the Sixers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, so, it's so cheesy. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, do you have a team of writers, or do you write it? Like, how does that work? I write my own stuff. Okay. Um, I do, like, I try to write uh, four different versions, and, like, I, um, I try to be as creative as I can. Sometimes when there's serious stuff, um, I don't, I kind of keep it just very vanilla, but most of the time I do try to to like get as creative as I can, um, you know, with, maybe with a, with a quarterback change or like a, you know, the Brock Purdy stuff was fun yesterday. Like, you know, this young kid and like, what a great story that was for him and the Niners um, like that, you know, I do try to get as creative as I can. And then I, 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 you know, recycle them, but you wouldn't hear, you would hear maybe the same thing from me, like four hours later or two, I'm sorry, two hours later. And then like, as news changes, you kind of work that in stuff, but I do write my own stuff. Have you ever been told to stop talking about the bills? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. And it's funny. Cause like, I, I think until like 2020 when the world was upside down and the bills were so good that I, I think that some people might not have known that I was a bills fan. Well, that's, that's very fair. So, you know, one, one kind of like serious topic here. Um, there's a local, uh, you might know the name Jerry Sullivan. He, uh, Got yeah. in a little bit of trouble last night on a, on Again. a, a podcast, ironically in a basement, like Don and I are in. And I mm -hmm. guess we just wanted to kind of ask you, like, what's it like, 
you know, being a female in sports, like what has changed for you over the last, like, you know, 20, 25 years? Do you feel like it's, it's, it's more welcoming and, and, and it's getting better, you know, for females in, in sports and sports broadcasting? I think it's, I've never had a problem. If I can be honest, like through my life, like I've never, um, I've never been made to feel less than I've never been made to feel like I don't belong. Like here, we all are even, we all talk, we all ask questions. Like I get asked a lot of questions about hockey because I'm a big, I'm a big hockey fan. I'm a huge Sabres fan, obviously. Um, I, I don't know. I've never felt like I don't belong, but I do feel like the industry as a whole and this, I would say this for news too, is more inclusive of people like, um, you know, women, people of color, like uh, different, you know, it doesn't seem to matter like what religion you are, what you believe in. Like, I just think that it's more, more welcoming in general. And I think that's a really good thing to represent a lot of America. Yeah, I think Buffalo, it's, it's funny because my wife is a teacher. Mm -hmm. She has a lot, of, a lot of teacher friends and want Terry and, and Brian Martin. We were out with them a few weeks ago. But she is such a sports fan to the point where it drives her husband crazy because every time they want to think about doing something entertaining and, you know, I'm looking in the calendar upcoming, he's like, everything you want to do always has to do with sports. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my wife, ironically enough, shares uh, season tickets with two of my friends. So my wife goes to the games <laughs> with my buddies and I and, and, and me and, and my boys go to my friend's house where we have kind of a, yeah. a man cave set up with, you know, because I enjoy watching all the games at the same time. Yeah. Uh, okay. but, but we, you know, I always tell people my wife has, has a, a season ticket with two of my longest, you know, my longest term friends. So it's always kind of <laughs> weird because like this Sunday morning for the Jets game, she woke up at eight o'clock, all tailgate That's funny. ready to go. And it's just, you know, it, it only in Buffalo, right? Like it's a, yeah. it, it, it definitely feels like a Buffalo thing. Well, I told my husband, I was like, when we got the, when we got the, the Sunday ticket three years ago now, or 2020, two years ago now, I was like, look, I was like, you watch, because I, I let him most of the time, he watches whatever he wants. There's very, like, I try, he's a Rangers fan, so I'll let him watch the Rangers and like, we'll just check in with the Sabres. But I was like, look, for three hours, we're not doing anything. We're not going anywhere. And you're not changing that channel. Because I remember two years ago, there was this, we're watching Bill's Jets and it was terrible. The game was awful. Um. We were winning and we did win that game, but like Rob's watching the bottom line and the Steelers and Ravens are engaged in this epic battle. And he's like, look at that score. I'm like, buddy, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. if it goes to overtime, you can change it if our game's done, but this is my time. Is he, is he a Bills fan by coercion or osmosis or by marriage? <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty good like he grew up a Cowboys fan because like people our age like it's hard to kind of describe to people but like there's a lot of people our age who are like Steelers fans and Cowboys fans and even Raiders fans because you know they were on all the time and they dominated like I've always been a Bills fan I never left I never you know even when they were bad but you know like so Rob was a Cowboys fan but not he's more invested like now in, in the Yankees and the New York Rangers, but he does, he's really good about rooting for the bills. Yeah. That's funny. I grew up in the Adirondacks. So our, our local uh, news was from Albany. Okay. You're right. You're right. All, all we had was what, whatever was on nationally yes. when I was growing up. And I remember yep. watching the Steelers and Cowboys and I fell in love with the Steelers to the point where there's hardly a picture of me without like a Jack Lambert or Lynn Swanson <laughs> growing up. So I come to work for the Bills and mm -hmm. we're playing the, the Steelers. And all my friends were like, you're rooting for the Steelers. Like, I, no, I don't, I don't think so. But I don't know. I was a little confused. Even right. right up till game time. And Jim Kelly threw a pass out in the flat and the Steeler DB, you know, jumped it and caught it in full stride and running 50 yards the other way. And I'm like, and he pulled up the lane with a hamstring and went out of bounds like to 50. And I was like, yes. And I'm like, it was at that moment I realized that, you know, working for the team. Yeah. They signed uh, your checks, Don. Yeah. And then they were like, you still hate, like, the Steelers. Like, I hate the Steelers. Now, I hate every AFC team except for the Bills. Yes. But, uh, yeah. It just, and, and it was more just working for them. It's some, you know, this culture that I know you're so familiar with. That, uh, yes. Again, I'm coming full circle. I'm so glad for my family to be able to experience the Bills here. So, yeah. so, so before we let you go here, a couple more things. I know, Don, I'm actually just looking at these notes here and I we're hadn't gonna, seen this before. This? So yeah, do Don, this? go ahead. This is your idea. So go ahead. I got plenty of time, by okay. the way. So okay. we can keep, we can keep awesome. going. All right. Yeah. We're in no rush. So go is, ahead. This is not a time concern. It's a, are you contractually obligated 
uh, are prevented from doing this. But man, if we could imagine if we could get you to say, uh, welcome to If the Wall Street Talk. Yeah, we welcome. don't have a voiceover yet for our <laughs> podcast. Welcome to what? I'm sorry? If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo. That's the name of our podcast. Okay. So John, do Don's it? looking for a professional. Uh, well, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to over ask, but if she would say it, sure. She's going to do it. Are you ready? I'm yeah. ready. Okay. Welcome to If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo. Beautiful. There. Wow, thank that's, you. That's a great. That's a great <laughs> ask. So, yeah. so what we We're normally what we normally do before uh, we let a guest go, we just had Don Beebe on. Oh, you know what? Let me ask. You I this love before. Don Beebe. Yeah, yeah. We just had that's He's coming great. out tomorrow. He was he was great. Let me ask you this: Give me three favorite Bills players of all time, and then give me three Sabers favorite players of all time. Oh, you're killing me. Um, let's see: Bills, Josh Allen, uh, Jim Kelly. I love Don. I mean, I love everybody, but like, I love Don Beebe because of when he ran down Leon Lett in that Super Bowl. Like that guy. I mean, I just he's awesome. And then when he won with the Packers, he said, "This is for all the Bills fans and everything." I love him. I just Let's got see. Chills. I just got chills because wait until you hear his answers to both of those questions when when this comes out. Yeah, they yeah. were tremendous answers. Like, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I I can't wait to hear that. Savers, that's hard. Um. I, I love this group of guys right now. I really do. I think Donnie Granado and Kevin Adams, I like the culture we're building. I think we're going to do good things. Uh, need a goaltender. Yeah, um, but still. Still, <laughs> still, I love Ryan. I love Ryan Miller. I love Dominic Hasek. And I love Pat LaFontaine. There you go. Yeah, I, I mean, Ryan Miller. So Ryan Miller just came back to Buffalo. Yes. I think he's going to have his jersey retired uh, yes. in the next month. And yes. he was, you know, it, it, it's about time, right? I mean, I, obviously yep. everybody loved Dominic Kashuk and, and you hear about all the guys in the 70s and all, but I felt like Ryan Miller for 10 years was like, was the Sabres. He, yes. he was the Sabres and he kind of epitomizes that that generation yeah. and, and, you know, after 99. Those Olympics too. Oh, yeah, the oh, Olympics great. in 2010. Yeah. That, yeah. What's the last Bills game that you've been to like, like in person? I saw... I saw Bill's Jets at the Meadowlands in 97. I went with some people from work who were all Jets fans. And we ended up sitting in a section of Bill's fans, like transplanted Western New Yorkers. And the guys I went with were so mad at me because they're like, we're, sur they're, we're surrounded by Bill's people. And they kept like, the Bills won that game. But it was so funny because they kept nudging the guys I was working with. They're like, you be good to this girl. You be good to this girl. You let her do what she wants. So that was, you know, that was the last time I'd love to go to a, a a game in Orchard Park, you know, with this with this group of guys. Maybe maybe next season. I am going to go to the championship parade in February. There you go. I will meet yeah. you guys there. There you go. Well, we'll you know, up on that. yeah, and, and we won't put that on old takes exposed. <laughs> I, uh, I I unfortunately <laughs> found myself on there uh, about a month ago. Like I said, we're kind of rookies to this, and we started this over Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And I mistakenly, after the Jets game. I felt like that was going to be their last loss of 2022. And I, uh -huh. tweeted, I tweeted on our account that that will be the Bills' last loss, you know, in 2022 mm -hmm. unless they rest their starters in week 18. Well, after that ridiculous Minnesota game, yeah. within, within four minutes, I had 200 likes and uh, <laughs> messages on my Twitter account. I'm like, what is going on? And then I realized that Old Takes Exposed had already reposted that. And I, <laughs> Christine, I had so many new friends in Boston and Miami and Philadelphia oh. telling me how foolish I was, and I don't know anything about football. And it was it was amazing how quickly right. like things can happen and your name can get out there. And right. you know, I realized. So then I I actually doubled down and I said, okay, well, the Minnesota game will be the last you know, Bill's loss in 2022. And thankfully sure. for the last month, I have avoided, yep. and I'm kind of worried, like every time the Bill's game's close, I'm like, oh God, if they lose, I'm going to be on Old Takes Exposed again. And his 800,000 Twitter followers are going to come <laughs> after me. So, so your jersey's about Yeah, it, and, right? and my, I'm wearing my Bruce, the, the Bruce Smith jersey I, I, I started, it was from my father-in-law who passed away. And we mm -hmm. found it in his basement. And I started wearing it after the Minnesota game and they haven't lost. So it has been washed every week, but every every podcast we Thank do, you, I'm going to keep that. it on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to keep it on until they lose. <laughs> so that's a little, little uh, superstition. So we're going to uh, play a little game with you called the two-minute warning where we have 10 questions, uh, okay. and we're going to try to get it in within two minutes, and then we're going to let you go. So, Don, okay. you want to get started first? 
Yeah. So, Christine, your most interesting place to watch a Bills game. Oh, I watch it at my house. I can't, I shouldn't be around other people. It's just me robbing the dog. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't go out to watch important games. Like, I need to be focused and watching the game in my house. Are you a yeller or are you quiet during the game? Uh, I try not to yell too much because my husband always says, don't upset the dog. Because okay. she gets, she's a rescue and I don't know what her life was before us, but she gets a little wiggly when you get loud. So... Uh, I, I, I try to be quiet. I, I do use many, many bad words. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, three people dead or alive that you'd like to have dinner with. Oh, geez. Um, let's see. Gosh. I would say, let's see. My dad, Josh Allen, and uh, former President Obama. All right. Okay. Uh, you're, you're entering an arena and you're the feature and there's dry ice. What song do you want played? <laughs> uh, either the Bill Shelt song or Thunderstruck there you by go. ACDC. Best concert you've ever been to? Bruce Springsteen. All right. Uh, when you do come back to Buffalo, uh, your favorite restaurant and a dish you like to have there? Uh, I actually, I'm from only in New York, so I will say the Beef and Barrel. Oh, nice. Great choice, nice. yeah. Uh, your favorite cartoon as a kid? Wonder Woman. Nice. Uh, it's a popular food, but you hate it. Nutella, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So at ESPN, which team has the most annoying fans? I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that ESPN has. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh... Gosh, it's hard. It kind of depends on the week. Um, I don't know. Who are the most annoying hockey fans? Who are the most annoying hockey fans? Because um, here it's the Maple Leafs. Like, the Toronto fans are... Yeah, they're a little... Yeah, they're, they are a little annoying. It's hard to say because, like, it depends on the week and so many... Uh, you know, Dolphins fans were quite puffing out their chests mm -hmm. for a while there. Yeah, this is totally a hypothetical, but had Dan Levitard still been there, uh, <laughs> you, 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 would, you would have an interesting week coming yeah. up right now. Well, well, they won the Super Bowl in week three when they beat the Bills. Yeah. It was amazing. It was, the, it was the earliest Super Bowl win yes. ever. Yes, they, won, they, they clearly won the Super Bowl in week three. Yeah. That's right, because I have uh, – the Bills sent me a long time ago. They sent me a jersey with my name on it, and it, it says Lisey on the back. And so what the Levitard – and I know those guys really well. They're social media guy. Like, he took the L and made it red instead uh -huh. of white. And I'm like, wow. and I'm, I just, you know, we had a little fun, fun banter on Twitter. And I'm like, hey, jerks, where were you when we beat you seven times in a row? Yeah, that's right. That was cold. Uh, can you drive a stick shift? No. <laughs> no shame in that. That's okay. It, it, and you, do you, was there a fight song at Geneseo? Because we usually ask the guys as the last, as the last question, whether they can sing five seconds of their uh, alma mater's fight song. I don't know if we had a fight song, but I know when the hockey team came onto the ice, um, they played Thunderstruck. Beautiful. Excellent. Well, there you go. That that's Great. your answer for the yeah. uh, the entrance song. That actually was at my daughter's wedding. They used thunderstruck. Was, really? is, that what, yeah. is that what Anna came into? <laughs> it was the reception. Not the, not the reception. <laughs> you you walked her down the aisle. The thunderstruck no, down. No. I did. Tell, I did tell her though before I walked down the aisle. People kept telling me how hard it was going to be. I, and so I made a deal with her the night before. I said, Anna, tomorrow when we do this, I need you. Trust me, just do it. You got to swear it. Nice. It'll it'll ease all it, and she did, and it. Oh, it, that's good. So we walk in kind of chuckling, and then we got serious. But yeah. Hell, anyway, oh, great answers, great, great interview. Yeah, thank this you, is, thank uh, you so much, thank you so much for your time and 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 responding on, on Twitter, and and hopefully you uh you able to hear Don Beebe tomorrow. We're going to release it uh, on YouTube and on Twitter, and I think you'll like a couple of the answers about Leon. Like he got choked up talking about uh you know the effect that that play has had on so many people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then uh, can't wait for people to hear uh, Christine's interview too. This has been great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks guys. All right. All right go, Bills. go Bills. Yes. Go Bills. Take care. Bye Thank guys. Bye, bye bye. Yep. I want to bid you now farewell, but not goodbye. Thank you very much, Ralph. Today is a, uh, is a bittersweet day for me. Uh, memories, many of which, which Mr. Wilson has alluded to, um, flood my mind right now. I'm surrounded by my thoughts, 
and uh, indeed by the presence of uh, friends unparalleled. Visions from a lifetime of thrills keep flashing before me, and yet the uh, future beckons, and I look forward to it with excitement and anticipation. Because I'll tell you something, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. So I advanced it on that. And we finally, we finally came to an agreement and decided to move forward. And so now my time with the Buffalo Bills, in my opinion, has come to its natural conclusion. Uh, how do I begin to thank all those who have been instrumental in enriching my life here? <laughs> Well, I can't do it adequately, and I know it. I can't adequately. But I remember you all, fondly and forever. Fox, so it's an early day. Be sure you get your taping and breakfast in. The meeting tomorrow for all players will be an 8 a.m. meeting. Enjoy your day today, fellas. It's great because it was a special group of people uh, at a special time in the city. The team that we had really unified the region. And there are still people who think fondly of those things and remember some significant things that happened during that time that were, that were pretty cool. You see, our fans are great. You know, they come out to get excited and they come out and cheer before the game. They're there, ready to go. And when you see that, when you walk out of that tunnel, you know, right now, here comes the electricity.